So this is Tales of Symphonia. I reviewed Tales of Fantasia, the original Tales game, a couple years ago now. And now we're going to take a look at this one. Let's go ahead and load a game here. I've got a file that's kind of um, in a particular spot I chose. This is just a save point I can click on to uh, choose my save file. And there's like tons of save files you can choose from if you really want to uh, have a bunch of files. Uh, ignore my game time. That is carried over over multiple playthroughs. I have not spent 160 hours on this file alone. Uh, well, I guess it depends on how you look at it. Uh, anyway, what we're going to look at first is the battle system. And what I'm going to do is set these um, characters to not do anything. So I'm going to be the only active player in this battle. So enemies appear on the map screen. You just run into them and you get into battle. And here you go. The enemies are gonna fight. So uh, I'm I'm here. I'm, I'm this guy Lloyd. Is his name. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and. So this is the first Tales game to go into 3D, like 3D battles. Like the environment here is 3D, but uh, I can only move left and right. I can't move like up or down in like three dimensions. So, um, I've got a normal attack, which I can press a couple of times to do a combo. I've got a block, which will block attacks, but it will not uh, block if I'm hit from behind. So if this guy were to attack me while I'm blocking from behind, oh, see, it said guard break over my head, which means uh, I can't block that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I just did there, there are special attacks. And those are texts that you get here. Each character's got their own whole list of attacks. And uh, let's go ahead and go with something basic here. Demon Fang. So this is, you get, you can assign four directional special attacks. You got, you just push the button here, neutral. You press up and the button, down and the button, or to the side, either side and the button. You can also assign shortcuts to right trigger and left trigger. And what these do, these are these can also be shortcuts for your other moves, but these two in particular can also be used to set special attacks for someone else. So if I want someone else to do something like uh, heal, I can tell them to heal by doing that. This, of course, would only work with a computer-controlled character, like it's not going to make someone else do something if they're another player character. Also, I did not block that. That is That was done automatically because I'm on semi-auto. If I was on auto, that means the computer will just take over and play for me. Or the game, I guess, will just play for me. Semi-auto has a couple of uh, benefits to it, but let's check out manual real quick. Manual is completely free on my own. I can, uh, oh yeah, my jump is I block and press up. That's jump. There is no separate button for jumping. But manual means I can just be wherever I want and do whatever I want. I just push buttons. Like, I don't even have to be next to someone. I can just attack out here blindly. So I can just sit out here and do whatever I want. If you go to semi-auto, however, then if I press the attack button, it'll automatically run up to the target targeted enemy and attack them. Now what's interesting is that you can sort of manipulate your direction a little bit by the targeting enemy because um, even though this guy is like in my way, if I'm on semi-auto and I hit the button, he'll run over to the enemy for me and hit them, which means they'll go around other enemies to do it. So there is that benefit to having semi-auto on, because it'll automatically move you. If there's multiple targets on the map, then you can go ahead and go to that target. 
So there is, so for the most part, you can only move like left and right, but if you change your target, then you can, in a way, change your positioning to be further north, south, east, west, whatever. So you can go other directions if you use that targeting to manipulate your left and right. Um, here we have the end of battle screen. EXP, very common RPG thing, experience points. You level up your characters and they become stronger and learn new moves. Um, bonus, those can be like extra experience points you gain from like a combo that you did. If you have like a bunch of hits, then you can get some extra points for that. Max hit, that shows how many hits was my highest combo in this battle. Gold, that is the currency of the game. It's kind of like gold, but it's, it's gold. And then time, obviously, is how much time I spent in the battle. Most of the time, battles will be, like, under a minute. And then grade, that is an interesting thing because it's sort of like a, a higher level kind of thing. Grade is, well, I guess grade can be used in the game to purchase and do some things. But for the most part, grade is not used for, like, getting new equipment or items. Grade is mostly something you save up for each time you play through the game. Because when you beat the game, this game has New Game Plus. And when you start a New Game Plus, you, get, you can spend your grade on things. The grade you accumulate over a playthrough, you can then spend to do things that you can carry over to the next playthrough. We will look into this again before we finish. So I'll, I'll cover what that grade shop looks like later. And then at the bottom right you can see cook. That is a prompt I can choose to do or not to do. It'll simply, if I choose to do it, um, I'll just cook whatever I have preset and it'll recover some HP or TP, whatever. Oh yeah, I guess I should mention TP, that is the a resource you need in order to use your special moves. You can use your regular moves all you want, but your special moves, which usually are more powerful or have distance options, and for some characters there's magic, um, those require TP to use. So, if I were to go into this battle and put um, all these characters back onto auto, then you can see what another kind of real this combat situation looks like. <laughs> There you go. And you see level up. It'll tell you on the screen right there if you level up. Grade. The amount of grade you get for a battle usually is less than one whole number. And that's because you're going to have hundreds of battles throughout the game. Um, if you're really good, you'll get like one or two. But most of the time, it'll be less than one that you get grade per battle. And you can see this, this file that I'm playing right now is a accumulation of many playthroughs because the time I have 160 hours that's how much time I've spent on this game as a whole not on this time playing through because I'm only level 22 as you can see there um, and then you can see I've got over 3,000 encounters that's how many battles I've been through my highest combo is 117 these are just my records for playing through the game multiple times um, probably, I think, like, four or five times now? Maybe this is my fifth time playing through the game. Um, in fact, I would, s I want, I saved my original file here. 60 hours is how much time I spent my first time playing through it. And then, um, uh, my latest ones, 138 to 159, those are two different files. This is the end, this is one game at the end, this is another game at the end. And as you can see, uh, I spent like 20 hours playing through the game one of these times. So you can spend as much as 60 hours on a playthrough, or you can spend as little as 20 hours to play through this game. Um, 20 hours, though, is like I skipped all the dialogue and kind of ran through it quickly because I knew where to go, what to do. Um, here's another um, site 
to look at. At the bottom left there, you can see Combo, Lloyd, and Colette. That is what is called a skit. Those things pop up at the bottom of the screen every once in a while, and it's optional to choose to select it, but you press uh, the prompted button. In this case, it's um, back on an Xbox controller. And what it does is it plays a little skit where the characters kind of talk to each other. So this is just a, a simple skit where the characters are... Um, this combo was like, there's like some affinity gained between Lloyd and Colette that was played out there. Now I'm going to go ahead and reload real quick just to show something out. So you may have heard in the battle, you know, the characters, they do speak English, but in the PC, maybe even the PS3 version, um, in fact, I think it is in the PS3 version, but in the PC version at least, uh, there is a option to play the game in Japanese. So if you want to play the whole game with Japanese voiceover, you can. I think I didn't even mention this before, but you change targets by tapping R, and there's no other enemy to do right now, so... But here's what I wanted to point out. Something in the localization originally, this game was originally released on GameCube, and they... Um, so the game itself, a lot of, I'd say about 50% of the, all the dialogue is voice acted, and then... The other half is just not. You just hit read text for when people talk. The skits, however, the skits in Japanese are completely voiced, but they are not voiced in English. Oh, it, it ran away. I wonder if I do another battle, it'll come back. Got grabbed there. There we go. Here we go. You can listen to this. Yeah, so the skits in Japanese are completely voiced, which is interesting, you know, if you want to hear that. But uh, in English, they're just not voiced. You just have to read it. And the thing is, the text at the bottom of the screen goes by on its own to keep pace with the voice acting. But the English one, it just goes automatically, even though there's no voice acting, so you kind of have to read, keep up with it. And then obviously, because this is the PC version, there are a ton of control and vis visual options, so you can completely change the keyboard controls, battle controls, um, a bunch of visual options. I don't even know exactly what they all do, but um, yeah. There's all that, like, when the battles start, there's like a, a, a screen that scrolls, it like pans over the battlefield, you can have that on or off. The skits, those things at the bottom, you can have the title on or off, or you can just have the button prompt show up. I don't know why, you'd want that, but uh, you can turn on and off the battle voiceover specifically, or the event voiceover specifically. You can't change the language per one, but uh, there's also like window color options you can change there's the there's that so there's these two that's a little bit and then there's battle difficulties which you can choose from obviously if you're playing this game the first time you need to play on normal if you play on harder mana you may not be able to progress I don't know um, I say that because um, that has to do with the grade shop which we will get to in a bit. But first, I want to go through one uh, more thing. Whoops. My character is stunned right there. Oh yeah, so if you hold up an attack on a flying enemy, you'll just automatically jump up and attack them. Of course, this all, all applies to the semi-auto option where your character automatically moves to the target to attack. I also want to point out how I'm getting into battles here. So, 
while a lot of games have like moved on from random battles to having enemies on screen that you touch and you get into battle, if there's still a separate battle screen, um, there is this problem where some games, this game not so much, it's really only in a few places where the pathway is so narrow, you're getting into a battle anyway. I think the idea of having enemies on screen for battles is that you can choose when or if you get into a battle. Because random battles, you have no control over it. There's a treasure chest. Oh yeah, the healing items in this game, which I, I talked about in the last Tales game I reviewed. Uh, the healing items are known as apple gels, lemon gels, melons gels, orange gels, and they restore percentages of your HP and TP. So, there isn't like a scaling factor of, say, Final Fantasy's potions to high potions to max potions. It's simply percentages all the time. So, an apple gel now is just as useful in the late game because it's a percentage-based heal. So that's interesting. And then life bottles, of course, will restore you if your HP goes down to zero. And if all your party members go to HP zero, then you get a game over. This game does send you back to title screen um, or load game. So if you get a game over, you will lose progress. There are, however, a few circumstances where a special boss will allow you to retry the battle instead of being forced to reload your game. But those are very few. I just wanted to get this part to uh, demonstrate the voice acting. Oh shoot, I'm in Japanese still. Alright, so here we go. Let's just listen to the voice acting here. Just to uh, demonstrate it. Just so you know it's good. Oh, I skipped that. Sorry, my bad. I won't be caught off guard this time. Prepare to die. <laughs> Colette, she's kind of a klutz, so she just falls down. Also, I am super high leveled for this uh, encounter, so this should be pretty easy. Yeah, so you got different kinds of moves that have different effects on the enemies, you know, you can... Some, in, some attacks will push enemies away, some will knock them down. So those are things to consider. Those are... Those TP and HP increase messages, those are part of a skill which I should explain next. Just you wait! I swear I will kill you all next time! And she is serious, wait. this... This this game has its light Why moments. Are people trying to kill us? But it also has it's it's not there a goofy game. I mean the character salvation. models all look kind of childish, I guess. Maybe she's a but design. The game has both its funny moments and serious moments. So who knows? At any rate, we are in I mean I kinda just introduced this character that wants to kill them to, to you. And um she is serious. But um those clothes. We'll see what happens. Professor, something also, this is a, I guess I just call it a trope, where if someone almost reveals a secret to the story, they'll say, oh, it's nothing. No, it's nothing. Let's go. So characters will always deflect, like, oh, that's an important plot point that could be revealed. Yeah. Anyway, she knows something that she's not going to tell us. But they're just going to hint at it and let us know that there's that thing. So this is another skit. I can't skip this one. This is introducing the unison attack. It's still early in the game and this is the first time they're going to let us use this unison attack thing. Oh, whoops. So there's a gauge at the bottom of the screen. Did I just say, read the whole thing again? No. Okay. So as you can see, uh, when you get to certain areas, there's like an option to enter or exit. You know, if you're leaving an area, you have the to field option. But if you're just changing screens, it's not going to prompt you at that. So if you're leaving an area, going to the roadmap, it'll let you know about that prompt. 
And let's go ahead and get into a battle here. Now we're on the world map. This is gonna be a piece of and here, you can see enemies still, but they're just like the gray blobs because they're the same gray blobs you'll see anywhere on the world map. Never stood a chance. So if we want to change the difficulty up, because we can, you can see here, it's still not a problem for us. I believe it just changes like enemy HP values and stuff, their attack powers. I got 0.76 grade there. And if we bump it up to Mania difficulty, Still says it's a piece of cake. Whoops. Yeah, so if you want to change targets, you tap a R button right there. But if you want to choose your target, you hold the R button, and then you can choose exactly who you want to target. But if you just want to switch, you can just tap it, and it'll just toggle to the next target available. Usually the closest one to you. Oh, I got much less great there. I guess if you want to check out the unison attack bar, we can do that here in a bit. Different moves, uh, it just goes up with like every hit that you deal out. Um, the characters themselves, I'm playing as Lloyd, he's the main character of the game I'd say and uh, he uses two swords. Uh, the guy in the purple armor, that's Kratos, he's a mercenary hired to join us. And then Colette, she's the girl with the wings, currently. And she, she is known as the Chosen One. So you're not playing as the Chosen One in this game. Uh, she's the Chosen One, and you are, you are helping her on her quest to regenerate the world. As the story goes, uh, the world's Mana is disappearing, and we're going on a pilgrimage, which involves going to uh, different um, temples and seeing uh, this angel oracle guy who's telling us where to go and wants to see us at each temple in order to give Clip more angel powers, and then um, it's all part of regenerating the world. Now, I'm not going to get into any spoilers, but um, that just sums up like the first third of the game there is a lot more to the story than that but again I don't want to spoil it because the great thing about the story of this game is that it goes a whole bunch of different places there are lots of twists that are interesting and basically the story of what you're doing just kind of like changes a lot so it's good for in that way now let's go ahead and check out that unison attack uh, what's going to happen, uh, let me make sure it's set up correct here. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to run into this. So, basically, you can choose um, what moves everybody has on their unison attack. This is especially important for um, uh, computer-controlled characters. Let's go ahead, I need to make sure I pick something that works. So let's go ahead, uh, let's see, Sonic Thrust. And I'm going to change this to my also supersonic thrust. Now, it doesn't have to be the same move for both characters, but I know this one at least will work. Uh, what's going to happen is that I'll hit the unison attack button. Everyone will have input for their own move. And whether it hits or not, uh, everyone does their own move for free, costs no TP. And then if there is a certain condition that's met, such as two characters using a compatible move, you'll get an extra move come out that's like a combo move. And that's what you saw there at the end. And that's what you and attacks do. And then the bar starts filling up again as it goes to zero. And uh, basically they're just like a, a super group attack. Which is great for like boss fights and stuff. But of course you can still use it whenever you want in a regular battle. Now let's go ahead and check out... Um, Oh yeah, another thing. There's a lot to explain in this game, I guess. Uh, you can see the map there. There's like the whole map. Here's like the local map. 
I can press X here to get on Noish, my pet dog, kind of. <laughs> and uh, being on top of Noish means I get a bigger field of view. See, if I'm, I'm not on Noish, then I got a small view. But if I am on Noish, then I get a much bigger view. And you unlock Noish to be used in uh, each area by finding... Um, uh, there are like stones, stone monuments around uh, the area that if you get the uh, stone monument then you can um, unlock Noish for the area to use. If you reach an area that you can't use Noish in, you'll just automatically get off. It is kind of an arbitrary thing, but uh, the benefit of being on Noish is not only having the wider field of view, but you can also outrun all enemies. So if you don't want to get into any r battles on the world map, you can get on Noish and effectively evade all of them. Now you still have to make the effort of moving around them because you still can get into battles, but uh, you have the speed and maneuverability to get around them. Now let's go ahead and enter this town real quick. And uh, as you can see here, there's like people to talk to. And here's like an inn you can rest at. Pay a few gold to get a room. Now, this is the thing where Occasionally, when you start stop at a place to rest, usually like the first one or two times you stop, there will be like a skit that plays automatically. Now, of course, you can skip all skits. You can just press start here to skip this. But um, skits do play occasionally when you stop at an end to rest. So your first time playing through, maybe you want to like see all the skits and you can want to stop there. And here you can go ahead and save. I'm going to go ahead and not save for now. And then here we have the cats. The cats are this group of individuals where you can do an exposition. You can like um, map making this will um, help you get um, your map filled out to use noise in other places, I think. Unvisited areas. You can get reports on like if how many items, how many treasure chests you've missed or if there are any other areas that you haven't been to or what monsters are in the area. I don't know. It's really kind of worthless to me. Like map making, what does this do? Look for the guidepost monument, which will let you use Noish, or long range mode, as it's called. So I guess it'll, they'll just find it for you. So I guess if you don't want to go out to find it, you can do that yourself. You can do that. Checking for items, checking for monsters. Okay, so it'll let you know um, if there's any uh, monsters that you're missing. So yeah. This game has its own collection of stuff like um, the monster list, which has all the monsters filled out in there. Let you know if you've stolen from them, it'll tell you what items they, you can steal. Otherwise, it's it's questionable. Oh, and if you use um, uh, to get their stats, uh, you have to use what is known as a magic lens. Use a magic lens on enemy. Well, actually, you use a magic lens on enemy to get in your book. You have Rain use the magic lens, and it'll get you all the stats. Rain is another character in here. We can sub her in if we want. In fact, you can play as any character you want, and you can make any character your on-screen avatar. So you can do that. You can play the whole game. Well, I guess not the whole game, because your party members do like come in and out as you go through the game at certain points. So that changes up things. But you can play as um, any character you want. So you can go out and get into battle with anyone you want. You can play as any characters you want as your on-screen avatar, which is a you know, fun thing to do. This is gonna be a piece of cake. So now I'm playing as Kratos here. And I would say all the characters are viable to play as. Like Tales of Fantasia, which I reviewed last time, really you only want to play as Cress because they're the only character. He's the only character that like was made to be played as. You can play as the other characters, but you're not going to be able to beat the game playing as the other characters. Uh, this game, I would say you can play as any of the characters. Um, there are a there's a total of eight characters in the game, and you'll see all of them if you watch the opening movie before starting the game. Um, Rain and Genus are magic users. Obviously, 
combat with them is different because you want to sit back and cast spells rather than approach the enemy, so they may not be the most interesting to play as. Colette, I think, is the most difficult to play as because I just think her weapon and attacks kind of stink. But um, sword characters obviously are pretty good at fighting, and then there's like um, there's a couple other characters. There's a ninja that uses cards. Um, a guy that uses his feet, and another girl who uses an axe. So there's um. Oh wait, I guess I should say there's uh, nine playable characters in the game. Now that I think about it, I was forgetting one. But um, yeah, that is the gist of everything. Equipment obviously is a common RPG thing where you get new weapons and you can equip them. It'll show you on the stats, you know, what changes if you want to equip it. And you got accessories which do different things, like this one protects against poison. Um, I don't have a whole lot to choose from here. Cooking I didn't explain entirely. Um, these recipes are obtained throughout the game. There's like this guy known as the Wonder Chef and you find him in different towns and places and he'll teach you new recipes. And then you also need the ingredients in order to cook the recipes and you can manually cook here if you want. And you can see what the effects are, HP and TP recovery. Um, but you do need the food items to cook and then at the end of battle you can also cook if you want to just kind of speed things up so you don't have to go into the menu and cook between battles. This is a way of recovering your health and stuff um, as you're going through the game instead of like if you can't rest somewhere you can always cook instead because um, I mean you can technically have enough TP and HP to go without cooking or resting the entire game and that's because when you attack like with a physical attack you you do gain TP back when you use a physical attack. Let me go ahead and switch the load here. And then at the end of battle, it automatically recovers TP for you as well. So as you can see, my TP is going up with each time I land an attack down there. The 181 up to 184. So you don't... So while you you may move use moves that use up a lot of TP, you don't have to worry about running out for good because... You don't have to go back to town to recover your TP is what I'm saying. It's because you can just use regular attacks only and you'll recover that TP back. Also, I want to note that the enemies, they have their own um, kind of effect where most enemies will... Most enemies will get their start an attack and if you hit them they'll still attack you because you can't interrupt their attack animations a lot of the time there are a lot of enemies that do that um, and as you saw at the end of the battle there I got TP back as well but let's go ahead and check out that um, oh let me look at the EX skill so the EX skill these are these things where you have gems you can equip I want to equip a gem here this will change it and then you have like each gem has four options EX gem one for Kratos in particular has these four options to choose from and then like EX gem two has these options have different things increase increase your max CP increase your mobility in battle if your character's not fight for the amount of time recovers oh so you can just sit still and recover HP or that's if you sub them out of your party, your active party, I guess. Um, but yeah, there's different effects you can have. And then if I put this back, as you can see here on the right, uh, it has like fizz status, life up. You know, if I put, if I change to spirit, they'll have spirit up. These are extra EX skills that uh, you gain from having different, from having these equipped, you gain these. So phys physical status prevents physical ailments. That's from having eternal and immunity on because those are highlighted white. Like spirit up is gained from having spirit and eternal. So there's a bunch of different combinations which you can experiment with or you can look up what you want to have. Um, they don't show up until you like have been through a battle with these equipped. And then it'll tell you, hey, you learned a new X skill and it'll be one of these. So that's how that those work. And that's what the life up and spirit up messages at the end of battle were that you saw. Those, that's what 
life up and spirit up ex skills here are and as you can see in the description down there it has constant or end of battle so there are different effects um lloyd in particular he has this um increased mobility in dungeons and stuff so like um his normal walking speed is this fast this is the normal character walking speed which isn't bad this is decent speed but if you have lloyd's personal skill on then your speed is, is just faster. Which is something, you know, as soon as you find that out, you probably put it on. Unless you find, you know, there's more useful skills to have. So that is the basics of the game. Let's go ahead and check out that um, New Game Plus thing. When you beat the game, it asks you to save your finished data. All right, so if we want to, if we go back to the main tile screen here, we can load game, and if we choose uh, this one here, this is a completed game. If we load this, it tells you, hey, you can use your grade to purchase new stuff to start the new game with. And when you beat the game the first time, you probably have like a thousand grade. Um, these are different abilities you can get, so you can keep your EX skills, you can keep your EX gems, um, you can keep your playtime, which I've been doing just to like track my playtime. Um, you can increase, oh yeah, so normally the maximum number of items of a particular item you can carry is 20. So like apple gels, I can only carry 20 of them at max. If I get this, then I can start carrying 30 of them max. And then you can inherit your gold, so you can keep that going. This is very expensive because if you have a ton of money in the beginning of the game, obviously it's going to be super easy. You, there is no option to like keep your levels throughout the game. So every time you start a new game, you're going to start at level 1. However, at the bottom here, there is like half experience double experience 10 times experience this makes the game super easy of course it's the most expensive thing here and then grade you probably want to get this no matter what because it just gives you more grade in general and then uh minimum minimum, minimum hp and like half experience these are like challenge things if you want to make the game harder for yourself these are ones you only put on for that purpose there is another purpose for half experience because there is like an achievement Actually, there's a title. I didn't even talk about titles. There's a title that you gain from getting to a certain point in the game under a certain level, and so half experience will help you get that. Here, you can keep your, like all the mini game data that you've done, world, your world map stuff, your monster list, collector's book, titles. This is like the main thing to replay the game for is to get more titles. Titles are pretty important. If I'm surprised, I completely forgot to. Um, talk about them so if we look here under status you can see these are titles right here sword of swords this is the best one to have your starting title is swordsman as you go through the game through like story events or side quests or doing special things like even doing like a task in a battle will unlock a title and these will change how your stats grow when you level up. So this will emphasize HP, strength, and defense, if I have that equipped. This will emphasize, emphasize HP, strength, and defense, and accuracy, and it'll do it even better than Drifting Swordsman, because if I switch back to that, it shows a negative, like they're red. And like that's red, but that's green, that means it does it better. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of different tiles that have different effects. But there are also titles that change your appearance. And these are the fun ones to collect because, as you see, these are like costumes and they're tied to your titles. And titles, uh, the costume titles all have no emphasis on stat growth. They're basically like the basic title that you start with. Um, so if you're trying to go for like beating the most difficult bosses without 10 times experience and you'll you'll need to use like your best titles but if you have 10 times experience because you played the game a couple of times already then you can feel free to use titles play on the normal difficulty and you can play through the game just fine with with uh you know costumes on which is fun because then you know they'll be like this in like when people are talking and it'll be funny because they'll all look funny but that is titles, and these are the hardest things to get all of. Um, 
There is a place in the game where there is a battle tournament kind of place, and beating that with each character is kind of where you get your best titles. Here is Sword of Swords. That's what you get from winning the tournament with Lloyd. Um, that's not the case for every character. There are two characters with titles better than their tournament gained titles, but for the most part, those are the best uh, titles to get. One thing I could look, one, else, one other thing I should look at is the strategy. Here you can choose how uh, computer controlled characters will play. You can choose them close enemy, farthest enemy, attack the same as, as you, the player, or choose someone else from you attack flying enemies, magic using enemies, the lowest, the enemy that's going to be knocked out soonest, um, whoever is targeting a character who needs help, you know, that's like for choosing a target. Here is how they use their skills. You can have them use all their best moves regardless of the cost. You can have them save some of their TP or don't use skills at all change frequency, and then move freely. This is how the characters will move throughout the battle, so I find these to be not very effective. Front lines tells them they should be up close to the enemies. Don't pursue means they should be away from the enemies. Hold position. This actually makes the character do nothing in battle, so even though you have them set to do stuff, this will have them not do anything. And then long range magic. I don't know, I would think that would be like, don't pursue, like keeping a distance from the enemy. Um, Regardless of what you use, I feel like Rain, the healer of the group, she's the one with all the healing spells. I feel like even if I put her to um, long range magic or don't pursue, and like healers specifically will have like this heal and support option. Like I think Kratos has a heal option as well, but like Colette doesn't have a heal option. She doesn't have like healing moves, neither does Genus. I feel like this long range magic option doesn't work. Like, Rain will occasionally, even though she's supposed to be healing people, she'll run up to the enemy and start casting her heal magic instead of running away. So there is a problem with how much the computer-controlled characters are smart. So there is that. Synopsis you can use to check out... Oh. I think this has everything in it. Not just, um... Oh no. It's just, uh, never mind. I thought it was showing everything from, like, previous files. Um, but yeah, this just, like, gives you a quick summary of what's going on. If you haven't played in a while or don't remember what you did last, you can always check the synopsis to see what you're supposed to be doing next. And that is pretty much everything I think is important to know about playing the game. So let's go ahead and check out the GameCube version real quick and talk about differences from that version to this version. I also want to note how the um, opening theme is different. Each time, so this game's been released multiple times, and every time they release it, they kind of change the opening theme song. So the original GameCube um, Japanese release had its own voice song that it plays. As you listen here, uh, this is the current version on the PC release. I think it was. I think this is even different from the PS3 version. And then the GameCube one, it has this different. It's just like an instrumental. Uh, the North American release of the GameCube version, it has this instrumental kind of epic sounding one. So they're all different. They're all. They're all pretty good. I think. I kind of like them. At least I like the PC one and the GameCube one both. They're both pretty good. All right, so you'll have to forgive me here, but uh, my ability to record GameCube footage directly from a GameCube is pretty limited. So this is the best I can do with uh, this, the picture. Now, um, let's go ahead and look at the differences here. So obviously this game is in its uh, original 4x3 video format. Um, of course, um, let's go ahead um, continue my file here this one which is at uh, end of the game let's just go ahead and check it out alright so here we are in fact I dropped this back down uh, next to um, where we were 
in the other game. So as you can see here, it does look a little different. There's like some stylized lettering here. Um, ignore the fact of how high leveled I am. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to really go into anything here except uh, the customization. As you can see, there's a little bit of difference here. Uh, it's got the same kind of options. Uh, the window background actually has a few more presets. But uh, I didn't even talk about it, but in this and in the in the PC version, you can like completely customize what you want your windows to look like. So you can change the color and stuff like that, however you like. You can choose like the main window, the enemy window, system window, menu. You can change all of these to be however you want. And it's the same thing in the PC version. Volume settings, you can choose levels of uh, volume. And then uh, the voiceovers, of course, there is no option to hear Japanese. Oh, movie subtitle. This is something that is not in the PC version. This is set to on automatically in PC version. There's no way to change it to off. So subtitles, there will be cutscenes that play kind of like the opening cutscene where it's animated with those characters. And people will talk and you can have subtitles on or off. I like to have them off, but there is no way to turn them off in the PC version. And then you can just adjust the screen. That's just like a old school thing that's going on here. Um, something I should note is that while there is a lot of the same titles, I don't know why I don't have Sword of Swords on. Oh, it is different. See, there is some, like, choosiness, I guess you could say. The, the ones you get from the Colosseum, the tournament, fighting tournament, is, like, a safe bet of the best ones to get, but I guess it's not necessarily the best. Um, it's been a while since I looked at this. But, um... Not that you can tell with uh, my recording quality, but the GameCube version does run at 60 frames per second on a GameCube. And then the PC version is locked at 30 frames per second. Also, I want to note that um, the, uh, the PC version, when it was... So it was originally released on the GameCube in Japan, and then they released it here in America, and then... They re-released it on the PS2 in Japan only. And with the PS2 version, they included new titles and costumes and fun stuff like that. That was later included when they re-released the game on PS3 as a combo of the original game and the sequel. They did not... They used the PS2 version as a basis. The PS2 version ran at 30 frames per second. It's only because the GameCube was more powerful than the PS2 that they could run it at 60 frames per second. So every release of this game since the GameCube runs at 30 frames per second. So if you're really interested in having visuals as at 60 frames per second, then you'll have to use like an emulator to emulate the GameCube version. But then you don't have the extra content that's been included in subsequent releases. That's not just titles and costumes, that's also like side quests, dialogue, stuff like that. There is new stuff that has been added to the game since its original release, even though it's not the best playing version of the game. It doesn't run the smoothest. Um, but the newer versions have more content. And I guess that's really the main selling point of those versions. The PC version, I can I can throw up some screenshot. I can throw up a screenshot of here's like an example of where because the game is now in widescreen, they didn't always uh, compensate for the map. So like you can see the edge of the map here. And then there's another instance where Prisea, she's a char she's one of the characters in your party. She'll say the wrong thing at an instance. There's an instance where she's at the top of the Lazareno Company building. She's talking to another character, and she she speaks a line of dialogue that's not hers. Like, it's another character's voice saying something, and it kind of messes with that moment there. Like, um, there's a problem with that. So, 
there are like some bugs with the PC version and I'd probably include the PS3 version with it. I haven't played the PS3 version but I imagine something like that is at least the off-screen widescreen thing that's still a, probably a problem in the PS3 version. I don't know if the dialogue problems PS3 version problem as well but um, basically this game has not been handled with care in its ports but it has, it has received new content, which is kind of like the most important thing that I care about for a re-release. I guess it's sort of a, a trade-off, I guess. Even though it shouldn't be, because they should be able to re-release this game with its best features and all of its content. So I don't know why that's a thing. But as you can see, the presentation of the game is still pretty similar. But that is pretty much the review. If you have any questions about the game, please ask in the comments below. If you have any recommendations for more games like this, please let me know as well. I am going to start reviewing a few more Tales games this month. So uh, anything that's not Tales, if you have a recommendation for, another for something that's not Tales but is similar to this, let me know if there are any other games like that out there. And other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.